I finished university last month, which is probably a fact I'm going to keep on bringing up in many videos to come. But one upside of having finished is that now I finally have time to read for pleasure again. And beside me, I have a pile of all the books that I have started reading since finishing uni, and I just want to talk through some of them. I've got five different books beside me, and just to be clear, in the name of transparency, which is what we want here at Ellie's and Pancakes, I haven't actually finished any of them yet, but the one I am closest to finishing is this wonderful, wonderful book. If you've never heard of Hamilton at all, A, I'm surprised that the rock you're living under has a good enough Wi-Fi reception to watch this video, B, stop this video immediately, go to Spotify and listen to it. To give a quick summary, Hamilton is a hip-hop musical based on the life of the American founding father Alexander Hamilton, hence the title, and all of the main roles have consciously been cast with people of colour to fill them. And this is Hamilton, The Revolution, affectionately nicknamed Hamilton by the Hamilton fandom, and it's essentially a book that details stories of how the show came to life. It's a mixture of both lyrics from the show, try and be fancy opening up, and also words. So Jeremy McCarter has done the writing and there's an introduction that explains what the book's about. And then there's also lyrics for every single song in the show with annotated footnotes beside it. I put it down because it's kind of heavy. As you can see, it's a pretty solid book. And it's also a book that I absolutely love. If you've been obsessively listening to Hamilton for the past months like I have, then try and get your hands on a copy of Hamilton. I feel like I've reached a whole new level of appreciation, not just for the creativity of the musical, but the hard work and team effort it took to bring it to the stage. The second book I have is a collection of short stories by Hilly Mantle entitled The Assassination of Margaret Thatcher and I've only actually read the first two of them but I will try and finish it but at the moment I have to say that I am pretty disappointed in it so far. I'd read some of Hilly Mantle's writing online and had really liked it as an extract from her longer novels. She, her most well-known one is probably Wolf Hall but in terms of these short stories, I kind of feel like not much happens in terms of plot, which is obviously quite common in shorter stories. But then I look for something symbolic or deeper in the meaning of what happens. But I'm not really finding it in the first two stories. But she is a really well-respected author, so I do want to give this another shot. But I'll probably pull it aside for a bit so I can read other things like... The Slaves Calls, A History of Abolition by Manisha Sinha. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I actually wrote my undergrad dissertation on James Madison's views of slavery. He was the fourth president of the United States. But abolition is something that I've never really studied in history, neither in uni or before in secondary school, or even further back in primary school. I'd heard vaguely of William Wilberforce, who was British, and I know he had something to do with the song Amazing Grace. But um, I really wanted to find out more information and delve in depth, and I saw a review of this that raved about the book. What really appealed to me about it from the blurb is that it's given a very broad history of abolition, and it's also disrupting old historical trends, which is what good historians should be doing. I'm actually only 80 pages in, and there's about 600 pages of text and loads of notes at the back. And this is the first time I've actually read like an academic historical work from cover to cover, rather than just dipping in and making notes on essays. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm learning a lot. The fourth book is a reread, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. And this is actually one of my favorite books. I read it for the first time last summer. I am about a third of the way through now. And so far, I'm really pleased to say it's holding up. And what motivated me to reread it was, well, A, to see if I was, if I still loved it as much as I did the first time. And also there's going to be a TV adaptation coming soon. It tells the story of a man called Shadow, whose wife dies in a car crash a few days before he's due to be released from prison. And it follows him and this figure called Mr. Wednesday across America. Mr. Wednesday claims to be, I'm just going to read from the blurb here. A refugee from a distant war, a former god and the king of America. And what I really like about this book is that I am really interested in America as a country and its history, which you can probably guess in the previous book. And this is kind, I see it as kind of an exploration of what makes America and the whole idea that it is a land 
that so many people have travelled to and made their home and brought old traditions over. The last book is kind of a cheat because it literally arrived in the mail this morning and it's called We Love You Charlie Freeman and it's written by Caitlin Greenidge and it's about a 20th century black family in America, of course, and they're asked by an institute to move into a house in rural Massachusetts to live with an abandoned chimp and to communicate with chimp through sign language and to essentially conduct an experiment to see how the chimp responds. I'm definitely not going to start any more books until I've completely finished reading all of those but let me know down below in the comments what books you're reading at the moment and if you're enjoying any in particular. Bye!